Creating your own theme is a great way to make sure that all of your tables look nice and use your brand colors. And having your own theme functions helps you to save a lot of time by making sure that you don't have to tweak all of your tables manually, but you can just apply this theme function. And today I'm going to show you how to create your own theme and create your own theme function with GT. So that said, let's go. This is my script where we're going to build a table and style it later on. So first we need a little bit of data. I've already loaded the tidyverse and the GT package. And now we can look at the GT cars data from the GT package. It looks like this and there's a lot of stuff in there. So let's first select a couple of columns from this and notice that I have already relabeled some of the columns using this special notation. In case you don't know it, this is just a little trick I like to use to rename columns while selecting them with select. Next, we're going to filter so that we only have Ferrari in here. So we want to have a data set on Ferrari and then we are going to arrange it so that it is sorted. And with that, we can just save it into a data set and this is the data we will used to create a table by just throwing this into the GT function. And there you go, we already have a very basic table, time to style it now. First notice that the column labels in our table are not capitalized, so let's change them with the calls label function and there we're just going to take the variable and set a label for each one of those variables, in this case it's just the same thing but written with a capital letter and if we execute this we get a nice table with uh, better titles in the column and we are going to add a title and a subtitle for this table by using the tab header function and specifying the title and subtitle. All right, this is a pretty basic table. Let's save it into a variable so that we can apply our theme on top of this table later on. And what we're going to do after executing this code so that we have this variable saved, we are going to pass this variable to tab options where we are going to change a lot of uh, table options. In this case, the row padding to make the table a bit narrower so that it is compact. We're going to left align the headings so that the table for the, the titles form a clean line with the columns and we're going to add a little bit of color to the column labels. We're going to make the title a little bit bigger and we're also going to make the subtitle a little bit bigger. And finally, we are going to eliminate a lot of horizontal lines because we don't need as many lines in the table. So with the tab options function, you can specify a lot of things really fast. Just go to the help page of this function and they will find a list of all the things you can change. Next, we want to apply a couple of individual changes to specific cells of our table. And a great way to do that is to use the tab style function where we can specify specific styles. In this case, we want to change the style of the text in the title here. So we need the cells text function to change text properties. And there we're going to specify that we want to have a blue text, we want to have it bold and we want to use the Meriwether font that we can import using the Google font function. And of course, we need to specify where we want to apply these changes and the cells title function targets all cells that are uh, in the title cells. In this case, we only want to have the title and not the subtitle. So we specify that we want to have the title here. And after applying all of these changes, our table looks like this. This is a pretty neat theme for our table already, but we can go one step further. For example, we can make every other row a user gray background. So this row, the next row, and so on. And we do this again with the tab style function where we specify the background color of cells using the cell fill function and applying a color there. And we're going to apply the style to the cells of the body that are in very specific rows. In this case, the rows are specified using a vector of numbers here and that we can easily compute using the sequence function and the number of rows from our data set. And now we have a neat theme 
where we have a little bit of color in there, kind of dark blue, and we have a dark gray background on every other row, giving this a little bit more structure. So what if we wanted to use this theme on all of our tables? We could just take this code here, let me just extract it, and wrap this into a function that we call, say, myGTTheme, and it needs a table. I call this variable gt underscore table. And in there, we just use the exact same code that we have used just now to style our table, just like before. But now this is a reusable function. Let's just eliminate this part here because this is dependent on our data and we want to have our theme function independent of our data for now. So let's just get rid of this. And if we save this function and apply it just like we would, like we normally would, and execute this, then we get our table from before minus the gray background because we have eliminated them from this part. Now, the great thing about this reusable function is that, well, we can reuse it. For example, let us create a new table based on the towny data set that is also part of the GT package. And there, again, we have a lot of data. So let's just select a couple of columns and only a couple of rows to have like a nice data set that we can use for creating a new table. We pass it to GT, we relabel the column labels just like we've done before. So all of this is in, yeah, just in a nice legible way. And then we also add a title and subtitle to this. And we're going to call this new table. And the nice thing now is that we can just use our theme from before and just replace the table. And we will automatically get the same look for this new table. This means that we'd only have to think once about a good theme. And after we've put all of this into a reusable function, we can use our theme over and over again. And just in case if we wanted to change something later on, this part here returns just the GT table like before. So we could go in here and apply another table style. In this case, it doesn't change anything because we've already done it, but maybe we could make the subtitle into Meriwether as well and into blue, and we can apply theme changes again. You see this way you can create a nice base theme that you use all the time. And then if you need something specific for a new table, just add this on top. In any case, this reusable theme approach is pretty easy to make, just drop everything into a function. But now I've said we had originally had that our final table in this table here, every other row was grayed out. And we made this happen by figuring out how many rows there are in our data set and then creating the row numbers that we need to target the correct rows and making them gray. We can do this in our GT function too. So in our theme function, we can do this too. We just have to figure out how we can extract the data from any GT object. You see, what we do here is we have a table and we pass it to a theme function. So we pass a GT object. This is what is behind this new table. And when I execute this, a GT object is automatically displayed like a table in the viewer because that makes sense. But in itself, it is just the object and we can just like a data frame access parts of that object using the dollar notation or this dollar operator. And now once you've typed that in, you see there's a lot of stuff in there that determines the look of the table and R will evaluate this to show you the table because that's what you're usually interested in. But here for our theme function, we can actually use this to extract the data because one of the variables that is in there is called data. And we can see, well, in every GT object, all the data that we've put into this GT table is stored. So that means we can access this data in our theme function and use the code from before, like using n row on, uh, on top of this to figure out how many rows there are in this table. So to modify our GT theme, we can just extract from the GT table object that is passed to this function, the data. And we want to apply n row on this and this will give us the number of rows. And now just like before, we can 
put tab style on top of this and we want to use cell fill again. I'm not sure, I think we had gray 90 as a the color there and the locations where we want to apply this uh, gray background had to be specified using cells body and in there we had to specify which rows we want to target and there we use the sequence function starting with the first row and going all the way to the last row and going only every other or using only every second row number here and this way we should get the original theme back with every second row being gray. As you can see here our studio already gives us a couple of warnings. You have to be very careful because this variable starts with an underscore and this is a special character so you have to put the whole name here into these back ticks. Actually you see this if you use new table, go dollar sign and the moment you hit enter to select this R will automatically give you these back ticks in there and you have to make sure to copy them as well. So our GT theme function is ready now and once we resave it we can apply this onto our previous table and we immediately see that now our theme is complete and we have even learned how to use data dependent stuff like the number of rows in our theme function so that we only need to stick our GT table that we have created before and stick it into our theme function. And the same thing works of course with our new table that we have created just to demonstrate that we can reuse our theme function over and over again. Nice, we have learned how to create a GT theme and stick it into a function so that we can reuse it over and over again. If you like this video, let us know in the comments and don't forget to hit that like button. And if you want to get all of the code from this video, just look into the description and follow the link there. There you will find all of the information I have given you in this video and all of the code. So thanks for watching and I will see you next time.